weakness. And this is the time that we come before the Lord. During this holy week, the Tuesday evening service. Let us pause for a while and thank God even at a time such as this. God has helped us to come before Him and offer our worship, offer our prayers and also wait for the Lord to speak to us. This is the time to be quiet for a while in the presence of God. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, a spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to discern what God's will is, His good, acceptable, and perfect will. O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood has redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O God. Let us come before the Lord with our prayer of adoration and thanksgiving. As you planted the tree of life in the garden of Eden, so you have planted the cross of your son in the new paradise, replacing the tree that brought us death with the gracious tree that brings us life. I can praise you, O Lord. As you judged the earth by water and saved Noah by means of the ark, so you judged the world with the water of your son's pure sight and saved an remnant through the wood of his cross. Be thank and praise you, O Lord. As Abraham's only son, the son he loved, bore to Maria the water of his sacrifice. So your only son, the beloved son, bore his cross to Golgotha, that the blessing of Abraham might be given to the world. We thank and praise you, O Lord. As Joseph was sold by his brothers and reckoned as dead, yet was raised in glory to the king's right hand. So your son was delivered to death by his brethren and was raised in glory by your spirit to rule at your side. We thank and praise you, O Lord. As the blood of the Lamb turned away the angel of death and delivered Israel from Pharaoh's reign, so the blood of your Son has saved us from death and delivered us from bondage to Satan and the world. We thank and praise you, O Lord. As Moses laid the serpent in the wilderness to heal those who suffered from their sin. So the Son of Man was lifted up on the cross to bear our sin and make us whole. We thank and praise you, O Lord. As Jonah lay three days in the belly of the whale and was raised from the dead to preach repentance to the Gentiles. So your son was raised from the boils of the earth to reconcile all nations to yourself. We thank and praise you, O Lord. Let us now come before the Lord to confess all our shortcomings. In our silent prayer, let us come before the Lord, remembering and recollecting all that we have done against God, against His ways, His commandments, against our fellow brothers and sisters, 
and also against the beautiful creation that God created. Loving God, we are both our church and our redeemer. Hear our prayer. We know, O oh Lord, that you see not only our deeds, but also what is in the depths of our hearts. We confess, O oh Lord, that when the pressure is on, we do not always choose your way. We confess that when the choices are many, we do not always choose your way. We confess that when temptation is, temptation is great, we do not always choose your way. Father of us all, as you have promised through Christ Jesus, we pray that you forgive us as those of those things we have done and we ought not to have done. And of those things we have failed to do that we ought to have done. Help us to choose your way. O oh God, touch us and make us whole. Amen. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Savior and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Indeed, God hears our cries and reaches out to rescue us. God is here to bear us up, lest we stumble and fall. Therefore, let us hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. It's again a great privilege to listen to Dr. Alan Palander with a different theme altogether, but the theme that goes for this Holy Week that helps us to understand what really God wants us to be. In His Son, He has given us everything. So we come to meditate upon the theme for you there when Jesus spoke of abiding. Can we now listen to the scripture reading? Today's scripture portion is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, beginning to read from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remind in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, Please with your branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burn. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, mind in my love, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Here is the scripture reading. Praise be to the Lord Christ. 
We now listen to the recorded message of Reverend Dr. Alan Parliament. Once again, I thank you for taking up this, uh, this responsibility of sharing the word of God with us. With the theme, <clears throat> the theme is, were you there? When Jesus spoke of abiding, were you there? When Jesus spoke of abiding. Good evening, sisters and brothers in Christ. Welcome to the second day of the Fashion Week Meditation. Let us pray. Gracious and most loving God, as we meditate upon your word, open our hearts and minds to the knowledge that comes from your word. For we pray this prayer in the name of the one who is the word of life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yesterday we were meditating upon the theme, Were you there when Jesus entered Jerusalem? We are following the words of the Afro-Caribbean spiritual song, Were you there? And that song was written when people experienced bondage, slavery and suffering. And these very words continue to reverberate through the centuries until now, even today. In the same context of suffering and bondage that we all undergo. Today, we would meditate upon the theme, Were you there when Jesus spoke of abiding? John chapter 15, beginning at verse 4. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. We are making sense of the passion. It is a way of understanding what passion means for us. And that is why the Gospels also try hard to make sense of the passion of our Lord. Because as we meditated upon God's word yesterday, we were reminded that the gospel deliberately slowed down as Jesus enters his own passion. And that's why every gesture, every action, every word, every symbol becomes significant in portraying what God felt in Jesus Christ, as God, through Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, endures suffering. For us, it is also to understand the meaning of the creed. When we gather together, we affirm the creed, and in the creed, we affirm that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. What it means to make sense of the passion, understand the meaning of our creed. The disciples, though being with Jesus, had left their fishing nets, yes, but they had refused to leave their own social and cultural nets. They were still caught up in, in that. But Jesus offers a new way of living. And just before being betrayed, Jesus offers a new way of relationship. 
because at the heart of human existence is relationship to understand relationship it is a sacrament because as we understand the sacrament is a visible sign of invisible grace of god and if we were to look at relationship in the same terms relationship is a visible sign of the invisible grace of god and jesus offers to us a new way of relating to each other and in john chapter 15 jesus offers us an image of relationship and what is this image the image is of a plant if we were to take the image of a sturdy plant we would choose the cedars of lebanon very strong tree the oak or any other trees that are so strong in strength and can last for years but jesus gives us the image of the vine the vine is not a tree of strength but a plant which is knotted which is twisted which is so imperfect when we see it but yet become strong and sturdy when it is connected to other vines and that is how the vine plant grows being nourished and connected with other vines and that is how it gives fruit isn't it just like our own relationship not sturdy does not display strength many times but it is twisted naughty and feeble and imperfect that is how our relationships are but jesus gives us the strength of such a relationship and there is a secret to it how this imperfect relationship can still be sturdy is what jesus offers as a glimpse to in other words in kannada if we were to say dridavada sambandhagala sutravannu yesu arpisudannu nam nortave jesus gives us a glimpse to the secret of relationship and it is in john chapter 15 In John chapter 15 verse 4 Jesus says abide with me In verse 7 Jesus says abide in my word In verse 8 Jesus says abide in my fellowship And in verses 10 through 12 Jesus says abide with each other abide in me abide in my word abide in my fellowship abide with each other if we cannot abide in jesus nor his word nor his fellowship we cannot abide with each other it is a step by step way in which we would see what our relationships are and jesus knew what would happen to this relationship in his own passion narrative the disciples though being connected to each other and to jesus when they start distancing themselves away from jesus and his word and his fellowship their own relationships fall apart and Jesus knew what would happen and it was a sense of the future that he was foreseeing 
and reminding the disciples that if you don't abide with me, if you don't abide in my word, if you don't abide in my fellowship, you cannot abide with each other. It's impossible for our relationships to become meaningful and sturdy, but full of strength, bearing fruit without heeding to what Jesus says. And therefore, sisters and brothers in Christ and dear children, how is our own relationships? And these circumstances are such that during the past few days throughout the world, we are challenged to see our relationships like never before in our own homes because many countries as we know are under a lockdown or have been advised many people have been advised to stay at home and now we are looking at each other and asking ourselves what does it mean to abide in Christ. Were you there when Jesus spoke about abiding? Was I there when Jesus spoke about abiding? And here we are, offered through the word, what Jesus meant when Jesus said, you need to abide with me. We are to abide in Jesus, in his word, and in his fellowship. And only then can we abide with each other. We have our problems. We have the difficulties with living with each other. But Jesus says, that is because in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the challenges, in spite of the struggles and the sufferings that we encounter in our day-to-day -day living, it is imperfect, yes. It is feeble, yes. It is naughty, yes. It is twisted, yes. But in all this, there is strength. An inner strength that God offers to us in Jesus Christ that we can strengthen our relationship. How do we do that? By abiding in Jesus. By abiding in God's word. By abiding in Jesus' fellowship. And finally, we will be able to abide with each other. Therefore, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as we make sense of the passion, as we seek to understand the creed, as we seek to understand the heart of our own existence, which is relationship. May God help us through the power of the Holy Spirit, in and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to comprehend the deeper meaning of our own relationship which is certainly a visible sign of the invisible grace of God offered to us so freely and so fully in and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God abide with us this night. Let us pray. Gracious and most loving God, we thank you for abiding with us. But we ask you to help us abide with each other as we abide in you. Whatever be the challenges that we face in our families, in our churches, in our communities, in our society, and today in our world, O oh Lord, we are asked by you to relook at our own lives like never before. But thank you that you are with us forever accompanying us, behind us, with us, leading us throughout our lives. And therefore we are not afraid 
abide with us, O Lord. In Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us now come together to perform our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered an unconscious Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now join in the intercessory prayers. Again, we continue to pray for the situation in the world. The entire world is in misery. Sometimes we wonder what is tomorrow, what happens. We worry about ourselves, but there is a big multitude of people who struggle, struggle even for a day's food. They struggle for their shelter. This is the time that we stand by them in prayer. Let us come before the Lord. Remembering all that God has done in his history, using his people, and we pray to him to fulfill his promises. The patriarchs trusted you and were not put to shame. Lord, fulfill your promises. The prophets sought you, and you committed your word to their lips. Lord, fulfill your promises. The psalm is rejoicing you, and you were present in their song. Lord, fulfill your promises. The apostles waited upon you, and they were filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, fulfill your promises. The martyrs called upon you, and you were with them in the midst of the flame. Lord, fulfill your promises. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. Lord, fulfill your promises. Holy and merciful God, hear the prayers of your church and help us to go forth in the strength of your promises. Stir up our hearts to receive you to new love, new energy and devotion, and send us the grace we need to be faithful followers of our crucified and risen Lord. For we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. May we all say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is given. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us into, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and always. Amen.